Pip Cleaves is about to join us for our main keynote session. In Pip's LinkedIn profile, she shares that her purpose as a contemporary educational leader is to enable learning communities that empower students to find their passion and dreams in an environment built for their future, not our past. I love it. That's so profound. I mean, how often is our education system based on us and what's good for us as or teachers? Our or our grandparents. Or our grandparents or our great-grandparents. My yeah. goodness. So I love that. We're going to be hearing a lot about that philosophy soon, very soon. I'm not going to do the rest of it because I've already explained when we first met. So Pip, I'm just going to go straight to you. She's now based in Victoria as an associate pr principal, Global Village Learning. Please join me in welcoming Pip Cleaves as our conference keynote presenter. Thanks, Jim. He forgot to ask me the question that we prepped. Well, you know, I thought you wanted to have a bit of extra time, but because you've moved from New South Wales to Victoria, yes. who do you barrack for? Collingwood. Yeah, Collingwood. But I have to because my nieces have been like born and bred Collingwood supporter, so I had to, or else I would lose favourite aunt status. So I want to talk to you for about 20 minutes about AI and how we use AI at Global Village Learning. Global, oh, if you want to grab that, that'll make life easier for you. So I took the trip down the, um, down the great road from Newcastle about 12 months ago. Peter Hutton, who stepped into Global Village Learning. Are we good? Yeah? Um, so I was, um, I've been working last year, last four years in uh, Newcastle area of New South Wales as the Deputy Principal of Innovation across four large high schools in New South Wales education system. And I was ready for a change. I was ready to f step into the world that I've been wanting to do. I was feeling really uneasy about education feeling frustrated that this impact that I wanted to make couldn't be made. And one day Peter Hutton, who's probably my favourite educator and human at the moment, said to me, yeah, I could probably do with you down here. You want to come? I'm like, no, I'm not moving to Victoria, you're crazy. And, um, and he goes, no, no, it's good. And I'm like, mm, yeah, still not good enough. Anyway, long story short, here I am. Um, my kids gave me permission to move down to Victoria. They're grown up now, said, we don't need you anymore, mum, off you go. So I stepped into Global Village Learning, which um, previous to October the 27th last year was Gisborne Montessori School. So we stepped into a Montessori school that starts from three-year-olds and at the moment goes through to 17-year-olds. And as we stepped into the high school space, our Montessori is staying rich in our primary years and we're stepping into personalised learning in our senior years. We have no bells, we have no uniform, we have no tests, we have no assessments. Every young person has a personalised learning plan that is assessed with their parents, their guides, we don't call us teachers, we're guides, every five weeks. So every five weeks we have a 30 minute discussion, we reflect on the goals of the previous five weeks, we set new goals for the next five weeks and we put them, some things in place to help us achieve those goals. Our day is spent in the morning, we roughly do some focus work, and then in the afternoon we step into projects. So our projects are project-based learning that have authentic meaning. Not something, a product that ends up in the skip or on a USB, but a product that impacts the community. Our mission is in empowering young people to build communities that positively impact the world. So through GVL, through our afternoon projects, at the moment we're building a faraway tree in our school, because why not? Our young people have just finished building a BMX track. They love playing in the mud. Every single young person in our school brings a spare pair of clothes and gumboots are our uniform, if there's anything, because that's what we do. We have an hour and a half break every day. We eat lunch together, then we disappear out into the wild. We have 10 acres and our young people can do whatever they want during that time. We have bikes, we have skateboards, we have all the things in the universe. We have three-year-olds exploring their world, right through to 17-year-olds in their angsty age, that is, teenagehood. We have our Bear Grylls of the universe, who often has a spider under his hat, keeping it safe from the world. Sometimes he has a frog in his hand. We have Pokemon's Reel in our space, 
So we have Pokemon cards. We have all the angsty arguments about people taking each other's cards, but that's okay because we need to work out how to communicate with each other. So at GVL, life is a little bit different. And AI to us is just one of our many, many tools. So I'm going to share with you a couple of stories around some AI uses. So that's Peter on the far right. And this is our three and four-year-olds at lunch at playtime. And one of them goes, Pip, there's a dangerous thing on the stick. I'm like, mm, OK, fair enough. And that was this creature on the left that you can see. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Peter's like, I don't know what that is. So we grabbed our phones, we took a photo, we chucked it up into Google search. We found out that it's a Spitfire sawfly. Hard to say when you're three. Spitfire horsefly. We then went, well, what is it then? Grabbed out ChatGPT. Using the voice command, spoke into it and said, tell us all about the Spitfire sawfly. It started talking to us and the little kids, their eyes are going round and we're going, explain it to a five-year-old. Redid it for us. Within minutes, we knew that we could touch it. Can we touch it, they said. And then we said, well, what other questions do you want to ask? So within five minutes, we all knew that we could keep it as a pet, but it probably wasn't, wouldn't be the best. That the yellow stuff coming out of its mouth and its other end is larvae. That it's not poisonous. And that it would be best if we release it to the wild. So we did. So that, for our three-year-olds, AI, we've moved away from Google. Google is where we go to shop. ChatGPT or Perplexity or any of those AI tools is where we go to find knowledge and information. And then, of course, double check. Because if you're a young person, ChatGPT will take you to another page of writing that can sometimes really not mean anything to you. Then if we step up into our, so cycle one is our three, four, and five-year-olds six-year-olds. Cycle two, as this is known, or our exploration and discovery stage, is our year one, two, and three students at the moment. And the other day I was doing a wander around, love to wander around every day because these little guys make me feel good. Really scared of the little ones being a high school teacher, but they, they make me feel good. And they, would, they had these pictures and they were playing with some AI and I'm like, tell me what's happening here. And what they did, they went through the process of, it was a creative writing day, they told the AI engine to create an image using what was in their imagination. They then either kept it on the screen or printed it out and then started writing their creative writing for it. So the AI became the tool so they all could personalise their creative writing story. And it was an image that made sense to them and was already bubbling away in their imagination. So then they could sit down and do their beautiful creative writing talk. By the way, the girl on the far left, she doesn't have a bleeding nose. It was um, book week and she was dressed as Stranger Things. So um, apologies for that if that scared you. But you can see we did print some out and we kept some on the screen. A couple of weeks later, it was the great shark tank. So we're doing some physical buildings around the school. And we like our young people to not just be tokenistic student voices, but actually be part of our student-driven, adult-supported learner environment. So our young people were invited to bring to us some ideas for a new play area in the school. So they went through the project-based learning flow using the design technologies flow, Nakara, that we all know and love, design thinking. And their end point was to do a pitch to Peter and I and Shark Tank Star. So these were their ideas for their Shark Tank. So these images were created from their prototypes, became their prototypes to talk about. So on the left is the Dog Dalmatian Park. And each of those bits around it um, are different areas for us to play with. And on the right hand side, is um, it was an Australiana theme park. So for the young people, usually when we do our project-based learning, if you've worked in that space, often it can be a product that they're kind of slightly embarrassed by, that it's not really real, it's sort of still stuck in their head and they're not seeing it out in the world, the solution in, the, in an authentic context. So for them to be able to put that to us, and yeah, we are actually building a new outdoor playground, that we can take elements of all this and put it in there and they were able to share their ideas with us and to be really excited about doing that. 
If we move on then up into our senior space, our senior space is very much students um, are over a year, over a week, they have a set amount of numeracy work to do and a set amount of literacy work to do and the rest is pretty much up to them to do their projects, to explore their passions, explore their interests. Sometimes that's on their own, sometimes that's with other people. So these guys here, on the left-hand side with the rainbow hair, is a student who is functionally illiterate. She has very, very big challenges with dyslexia and she struggles to access any sort of written word. So for her, AI and different tools on her phone are her way to communicate and to understand the written world. So she knows, she, I, sometimes I take her to school with me, because why not? Because she lives sort of near where I live. She's like, Pip, how did Einstein die? I'm like, um, not really sure on that, but do you want to Google it on your phone? She goes, yeah, but then it just comes up with links and I can't read them. I'm like, legit? Why don't we open up what tool could we use? She went that chat thing and I went, that'll do. Let's look it up, but it might be wrong, so we're going to have to double check. So she asked and within seconds she had some information and she kept asking it to explain it even more and she found out how, that he died from an aneurysm. What's an aneurysm, Pip? How could we ask ChatGP to explain an aneurysm? So in no time she's able to access access the same level of literacy as her peers and it is actually life-changing for her. Next to it we have a young lad who's um, really excited by electronics and engineering, wants to become a mecha, mechatronic engineer, is that the right word? I don't know, nano something, big word. Um, and as you can see I don't have that skill set. So he's able to explore and use different tools in order to do that. Over on the right hand side we have Mr. Perplexity. He does not like to use ChatGPT or the other tools. He only likes perplexity. So that freedom to choose is really important for us. So he will go and look at different apps to, to use around the world. We found the other day that they all love to humanise their work. So we have part of work being a senior at GVL is that you can apply to do a job in the school through our employability skill program. You apply to do a job, be that admin, or are working at, in the office, and the admin crew answer the phone and do different tasks for us. They learn about different wage laws, they learn about being paid correctly, about their rights as an employee, about all those things, and they get a gratuity for the work they do at the school because no one should ever have to work for free. So in that role, they need to be able to use, find out information themselves. So they had to write an application to us to do the job, so they often use ChatGPT to help them frame a letter and an application that works for them. We use EdApp. So EdApp is an AI course creator. So I've created some ChatGPT apps, some apps inside ChatGPT, where I can type a topic. It'll map it back to Akara at level year 10, year 9 and year 10 level. Give me those outcomes and give me four weeks worth of learning in dot points. I then take that content, put it into Ed App, and it structures a course for me as a taster, a scratch and sniff. So if I have a student who says, I want to do hairdressing, what's that about? I'm like, right, let's do a little bit of a test for you. So we do a little bit of a self-directed um, course for her in Ed App is able to see if that's something she wants to explore further. No need to dig in too deep before she can back out. Goblin tools. For the neurospicy, we have about 73% of the students in our school identify as neurodivergent, which means we do things differently in our space. And one of those is goblin tools. When you've got a, oh, so I want to learn how to make a tree house. No idea how to get there. If you go to Goblin Tools, type in, it'll break down that project for you into achievable steps, telling you how to do it along the way. Carnmigo. Carnmigo is not available to us in Australia yet. Carnmigo is a tutor that sits on top of the Khan Academy. However, inside ChatGPT is my AI tutor app, which is Carnmigo's brains, but sitting inside as a GPT app. So our young people are able to go in there if they're doing their Khan Academy, coach or guide is not around, able to pop into 
AI tutor to find out some information to, to start understanding the content that they're getting struck on. Perplexity, as I mentioned, is another great tool that we're starting to use. So then, that's all the young people, but then let's start talking about my world. I'm going to stand behind here because there's no way I'm going to remember this for a second. These are all the ways I've used ChatGPT or AI in the last month. So on the left hand, right hand side, you'll see, see where there's little Gs? Has anyone ever made a GPT inside ChatGPT? It's a little tiny app. So it's a mini trained module. So you can go in and you don't have to type your prompt all the time. For example, join the wordsmith. Joan has all my strategic information, my glossary for GVL, all the information that makes GVL GVL, all our special source, all the content that I use all the time, I've uploaded it into that and I've trained her to understand our language. So when I open Joan and type, write me an email to XYZ, she uses all the language and the tone and voice that I want her to use. So it makes it easier for me. I have social media posts. I created a GPT to help write social media posts that are punchy when I'm busy. So I can go into Adobe Express and do the image for my social media post, pop into ChatGPT, say, teenagers, grass is greener on the other side, enter. It'll give me a beautiful three social media posts. One's a formal one, one's in between and one's a bubbly one, so that I can choose what mood am I in for this post, copy and paste that into my social media platforms, off I go. I use um, job ads. I've created a GVL recruitment writer, which has all the information and the structure for me to put ads on Seek to write out the ad that I want for my school or my community. We've got project planners. So the project planner, GVL project planner, I type in there, my spring garden, and it'll give me an eight-week course stepped into the four stages of the design thinking flow as a, in the design technologies with activities, a CARA outcomes mapped for me. So our guides can then take that information, this is available to them, and they can create their plan and their project out of that. It's an inspiration for them. It's not the work, it's the inspiration. We've got parent communication. Sometimes you've got to write strong emails, right? I'm not good at that. I get really anxious about having to be the strong person. So I get ChatGPT to help me and I always write, nice little one, actually no, I suggested I should write this one day, um, write this so I can't get sued. It's amazing what it does to the language and you do that. Write this so this is the last email I'm going to respond and it gives you a nice ending to it. It gives me the stuff that I'm too anxious to do. Um, so that is my, Joan helps me with that. Um, I've got how-to guides. So I've got Excel formulas. Excel, of all the technologies in the world, I still struggle with an Excel formula. So I pop onto, there's an app called Excel AI, and I say, in column A, I've got this data, in column B, I've got this data, in column C, I want this to be the result. And it will give me the actual formula that I can then drag and drop and just pull down. Works really well, actually, quite excited, but it explains it to me as well. So I know what that formula is telling me. Um, radio ads, we got an ad coming up soon. So it helped me to write some punchy 40 word things for radio ads, catchy ideas. We've got strat strategic stuff, imagery. I will use um, Adobe Express. I also play in mid journey a little bit for my imagery work. So wherever it is, I'll go there to find things. As I mentioned before, it's a Google replacement for me. Had to do a job interview the other day, wanted to ask some different questions that it's for a role as a digital content and AI ambassador for the school, so I wanted to ask some different questions. So this helped me to some frame. Joan did it for me because she knows my language, she knows my tone, she knows what I expect. Podcast introduction. At the moment, we're just creating a podcast between our aged care facility that's near our school and our young people. So the young people have been going down there and asking questions, and we're putting that into a podcast. So we needed some music. So we got some AI to help us create some background music for that, as well as, of course, the image work. Formal documentation, using VRQA and VCAA documentation that needs to be done. It helped me to do that. 
help me to do some of the big stuff I didn't know how to do. I literally sat at my desk one day just going, I don't know how to do this application. And I went, I think chat might be able to help me. So I uploaded, I referred to VCAA websites, to VRQA websites, all the things I needed to, and it helped me get through. And it really was a lifesaver. Um, of course, colouring in sheets. Who doesn't need a good colouring in sheet every now and then when you've got a dysregulated young person at your door and you know they probably just need to sit and be quiet for a little while and do some quiet work. So um, we can quickly whip up one of those. Video summarising. So unlike a lot of the next generation, I'm Gen X, proudly so, I'm not great with video watching to learn things. I'd much prefer to read things. So this video summariser, pop a link into it, ask it for the three main points out of that, it'll give you those three main points. Really handy. And naming my cat, of course. Just got a new cat. What name are we going with? So ChatGPT and I had a lovely night working that out. So some of the, I guess, for me, in terms of AI and schools and frameworks and all the things, I, I think back to 2009 and 10. Who was in the great wave of Web 2 tools? Yeah. How many of those do you still use? Probably one or two, right? And we had all these frameworks for which tools do we use, and we had the TIM matrix, we had Bloom's Digital Taxonomy, we had SAMA, we had TPAC, we had all these frameworks. And in the end, did we really use them or did we just let the young people have access to the technology and let them work with it? So taking that knowledge, it's my, actual, it's my honest belief that we already have every policy we need in a school ready to keep ourselves safe. We have our correct use of internet and, and, internet and technology in a school policy, right? Usually, and most young people sign off on that or it's part of the school DNA. We also have our academic integrity policies around plagiarism, around you know sourcing where we get our thoughts from. To me, that's the two you need in order to keep your young people safe. And as at GVL, as we say, young people have a far greater capacity than we give them credit for. They know what to do. And if we give them an authentic use of a tool, then they're likely to use it in a way that's authentic for us as well. So I don't think we should be scared about ethics. Anyone who's raised a teenager knows they go through those tough years, right? And as a parent, you have to hold on that they've got your values and they're going to come out of the swamp with your values. That's how I feel it is about AI. If we as educators and the world around the young people hold that integrity, hold that we use it the right way and they use it the right way, then we will all grow together. But I don't feel we need 15 frameworks to do that. I don't feel we need a whole lot of work around that. We should just use it and explore it. So, but the two things I do say that we need is you can never prompt correct, well, you rarely get the prompt out the first time, right? It's a process of creative thinking. It's a process of problem solving, of knowing where you need to get to. So my recipe for prompts is always to give your tool a job. You are a school principal. You are a marketing strategist. You are an XYZ. Give it a task. You need to write a 40-word blurb for a radio ad for your school. I only want 40 words. Make it fun and punchy. Make it a friendly voice and tone. And then, don't forget tone and voice, then you start with that and you tinker and you tinker and you tinker until you're at the right spot. Then the next rule is the AI sandwich. And this is how I think it's a, the, how I use it. I'll use AI to draft with that little bit of an inkling of where I want to go. So I get it to do the draft. I then pull that down when it's at a spot I'm happy with. I do some playing around with that draft to make it how I want it to be. And then I put it back up into the AI to do a proof and a, and a language check for me. Oh, by the way, Joan has write, always write in Australian spelling for me. So I don't have to worry about that stuff. So make sure you pop that in your stuff. So AI is my proof too. So I start with AI, I do the human work in the middle, and I finish it with a proof. And that's how it seems for me that my intent 
and my language is within that. And this is how we encourage our young people to use it. So if they're doing their job application, we get them to draft something, chuck it up, what is it that you're wanting? Bring it down, does that sound like you? No, it doesn't. Why, how would you change this to sound like you? Let's put it back up again and get that grammar and that proofing done. Now you're probably good to go. So that in a nutshell, where are we heading to next for me? I am eagerly awaiting for my plaud to arrive. So plaud can be, I can hang it on me, put it on here. But when I'm chatting to a parent in the playground because menopause, I forget everything, right? By the time I get back inside, I've forgotten. Plaud can record things and send me a summary of the dot points out of that conversation. Anyone who's used Otter AI in meetings, which we do all the time, this is a similar to that. So it will summarise a conversation to help me move forward with my tasks. I'm going to keep creating GPTs that automate our world. I use Zapier more and more as an automation tool to connect different platforms together to make our school system even easier for our guides to hang out with the young people and do all the fun stuff because that's what they're there for. And I'm pretty excited about text to video. So Sora and ChatGPT, I know you guys in Adobe have got some of that stuff coming through as well. I'm excited to see what we can do with that and where that might take us. So that's sort of where I'm heading next. I think Tim's kind of standing there ready for me to move on. Um, so that's basically at GVL, how I see it, how we use it. You're always welcome to come and visit us for the day or half a day or drop in any time. We're in the beautiful Macedon Ranges about 45 minutes north of the airport. And we've always got young people who are happy to have a chat to you and tell you why the place they go every day is a little bit different to the place down the road with the bells. Thank you, Pip. Wonderful. So many ideas, so many resources. And I love the way that you packaged it all into a sandwich. Yeah. And I love it. It's just You could apply that to almost anything that you're working with at the time. I won't take credit for the sandwich. I don't know where it was, but somewhere I heard it along the way and I went, that works for me. That's how we're going to use it as well. Wonderful. I did see some nice questions coming through online. Yeah. Let's uh, cross to them now. So Erin's going to grab the special ball microphone and let's find out the first one. While she's doing that, you guys start thinking of your questions and then where's my favourite uh, ball catcher? There she is. She's getting ready to. This I is, get to meet Tim's this is, this is the reason why you were born. Just remember this. All right, first question, Erin. We just got that microphone on, folks, with the ball. Is that still on? Try again. Shout. I'll repeat it. Great question. Yeah. Do you want to repeat the question? So yeah. um, Sam wants to know, do we have any way to um, clarify hallucinations, stop worry about risks with hallucinations and what we might do? For that conversation, I think we asked it a number of times just to make sure it was reiterating the same thing. I guess, you know, adults are always going to touch something before young people, one thing. Um, and we trust that we know, we'll think about it and consider the information that's in front of us and not put the young people in a space of danger in that way. Great. And thank you, Sam. All right, Good let's job. get the ball. Is the mic working? Do we need to do anything? Just give it a, give it a test there, Talana. No, the mic's not tap, working. Tap, tap. Maybe, maybe pass the mic over to our AV people and see if it just needs to be re-triggered on. And while that's happening, maybe someone can just call out, I spent ages putting that ball together. It was like, I heard that there's, there's an invention that actually does it, and I looked it up, $3,000 later, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That cost me 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I already had the mic, it was great. If it worked, it would be really great. <laughs> So what you need to do is you need a young person from GVL, yeah. you need to give them the problem and ask them to solve it for you. Well, I've got an open invitation. And then they can I? charge you for the IP for it and to develop it even further. $30,000? Yeah, we'll work on that. We'll give you 20. <laughs> All right. Maybe um, if anyone's got a question, yes, sir, could you call it out? Uh, 
Yeah, fantastic. So um, GVL, do, uh, oh, sorry, do we have any alumni for our style of education that can attest to it? So at the moment, when um, Peter Hutton stepped into Gisborne Montessori School in 22, it was K to six. We've been spreading through. We just had our first graduate who will leave us at the end of year 10 and actually come to RMIT next year and do um, a certificate for in design to begin her journey. We'll be starting year 11 and 12 next year with our young people doing a VCE vocational major with a diploma of entrepreneurship as their graduate piece. So they will leave us with a diploma of entrepreneurship so that they can step into second year business at many universities around Australia, but also step through to university without needing the ATAR. And that's something we're really proud of. If they don't want to do the diploma of entrepreneurship, we will support them to find any certificate for or any university entrance sort of level activity that they would like to do. I love it when Peter Hutton, because Peter was the principal of Templestowe College yes, that's before correct. ordering this. Yes, that's correct. And he was doing similar things yes, there, yes. connecting with Swinburne University. Yes. And, and the kids didn't have to do year 12. Well, they, well did year right, 12. They didn't exactly. have to do the exams. Uh -huh. They would get straight because of the reputation of the portfolios correct. they were building. So we start so portfolioing from year one. Yeah. So by the time they get through to their seniors, they'll really know what a good portfolio, how it can show their learning. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've got someone from Akara here, but we, you know, we, we, do, we do like exams. We do like, but we do like alternatives. We do like the Absolutely fact that we can there are alternatives. It's wonderful. Yep. All right. We've got, we're not going to throw that microphone. We're just... <laughs> it's on? Okay. Hi. Um, my name's Zoe. Um, hi, Zoe. I, hi. I actually live near GVL, so I might pop in for a visit. Please do. Okay, awesome. Um, my question sort of attaches to the previous question. Um, I remember you saying about one of your students loving engineering and things yep. like that. Yeah. Could you, because I'm a high school teacher, yep. I just sort of want to know what that further education looks like from yep. now to, let's say, five in the next five years sort Absolutely. of thing. So at GVL, we feel ourselves with high quality adults. So you don't need a VIT qualification to be a guide and to be able to support a young person on a journey of engineering. So we have a, an electrical engineer who works with Telstra, who comes and spends two, three afternoons a week in our school, in our community, supporting anyone who wants to do electronics. So they're helping. We, as the VITs in the room, ensure all the compliance is there and that we're moving forward the way we need to. So we're surrounding ourselves. We have a mechanic who works at the school three hours a day, supporting a bunch of young people in our Make and Move Club, who after they've done some of their basic literacy and numeracy will step outside and learn how, how mechanics work and how to build things and how to do those things whilst being in the care of a really good quality adult who can be a great mentor and role model to them. So we fill as many people from anywhere to come in and support our young people. Excellent. Uh, just checking Erin online, is there any burning questions that we want to be posing? Got the microphone coming that way. Oh, we've got two microphones coming. Ooh. Oh, gosh, we're in abundance of microphones. No more questions, but there are some um, links and suggestions for um, iterating new prototypes for your ball microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Some prototype um, um, iterations for your microphone have been oh, handed in, nice. so that's Good. great. You'll be able to work on those. Right. Good. Yeah. Yep, I know. And the whole team was laughing at me when I when I showed them. The, I was so proud, wasn't I? I was so excited about it. I go, yeah. I'm not sure it's going to work. Anyway, here we go. Question over here. Hi. I'd just be really interested to know, sort of, what percentage of your kids would be classified, I suppose, as being neurodivergent. What sort of supports yep. does uh, the Global Village have for those students? Sure. 73% of our students identify as neurodivergent. So our supports for them are, um, we have, first of all, two guides in three guides full-time in each classroom or learning space of around about 20 students. We have um, the personalised learning plans every five meetings, we pair every five weeks with the guides and adults and the young person being part of that journey. We have a play therapist on board. We have, um, it's amazing when you actually 
do work that the young people have an interest in and that supports them to grow and be happy. Um, a lot of those struggles we can often see disappear. We have young people in our school who didn't attend school for two years mm. and now within a term, they, the car doesn't stop and they're already out running inside. We have a young, a young person who went to school three hours a week and now she comes to school three hours a day with us. So it's all about providing a connected, a relationship focused, a safe space where academic progress is important but it's not the main thing, that social growth is really important to them and important to us. We've got time for one more question. I think um, we've already had a question from you, so we'll just maybe go over here and then you can have a chat with Pip during our break, which is about to come up. Yep. Hi. Um, so I guess one of the questions I've got is when it comes to generative AI, we talk about academic integrity, we talk about yep. making sure the students understand their role in it, but as a pre-service teacher on my placements, I've definitely had some trouble with some students who will turn in work and say, oh, this is my own work, and I'm like, yep. That's chat GPT. Yeah. How do you kind of facilitate that conversation of, this is really great that you're trying to use a tool, but you're trying to pass it off as your own work and trying to build it into their own work. How Absolutely. do you sort of facilitate that? So with our AI sandwich, by asking students, by reflective pieces, so good story. Um, a young person did put an application in for ESDP that we knew came straight out of chat GPT because that was not that young person's tone and voice, right? So in the PLP meeting, when we were reflecting on that growth of the last term, we're like, so let's have a chat about this. It, reflect on the language used in this. And we had a conversation around it. We didn't demonize it. We didn't make it a bad thing. We just had a conversation around, is this really you? What would be a better way to put yourself across in an application letter? Because if I read, something that is clearly not you, I'm not going to give you the job. So it's about a conversation and a relationship, yeah? That's the important thing here. Yeah. Can we give Pip Cleves a round of applause? Thank you so much, Pip. Thank you. Thanks Lovely for to reconnect. Me. It's wonderful. It's great to be here.